Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to Celebrate Sausage. In today's episode, we're gonna be making a very popular German sausage called Lieberkäse. Now what's interesting about this very cool sausage is that its name doesn't necessarily reflect its ingredients. Literally translated, Lieberkäse means liver cheese. And this sausage has neither liver nor cheese. But in the late 1700s when it was invented, it's said to have had liver in the original recipe and a cheese-like consistency. This is an emulsified sausage that's formed like a meatloaf and baked in the oven. It forms a beautiful crust around it and it's absolutely delicious. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the entire process of how to make Lieberkäse. Let's get started. All right, let's make this German Lieberkäse and let me show you what we're working with here. Very simple setup. We've got a little pork, a little beef, and some pork back fat. Check the description box below for the recipe link. We are gonna be using a chef's knife by Kotai to make the magic happen. And with this particular sausage, we're gonna be processing the meat in two stages. The first stage, we're gonna be grinding all the meat and then we're gonna grind the fat. We're gonna keep it separate. And then stage number two, we're gonna pop it into our food processor and turn it into a batter because this particular sausage looks a little more like a meatloaf. So there's our fat, there's our meat. Let's go ahead and pop this into the chiller. We do want it partially frozen before we grind it. So away we go with that. Let's look at our spices. We're gonna add salt, a little cure number one and cure number one is totally optional. We've got white pepper. We're also gonna add just a touch of nutmeg, some smoke paprika oh this is going to look amazing i do have some potato starch that we're going to keep separate that's going to be our binder and then in addition to that we're going to cut up some fresh onion and some fresh garlic but don't forget to check out the description box for the full details of this recipe i feel like i've missed one of the spices mustard powder or something like that anyway let's go ahead and look at what we have here we've got our spices our binder that's our potato starch and you can use cornstarch or high heat, non-fat dry milk, and then there's our onions and our garlic, very nice. Let's go ahead and grind the fat first. When you make an emulsified sausage, it's better to add the fat at the end of the process, which is why I'll generally keep the fat and the protein separate. So we're gonna grind the fat first, and then we're gonna grind the meat and vegetables together. There we go, that's our grind. We've kept our meat and fat separate. We've also got the vegetables with the meat. So that's how that's gonna look. I do wanna pop this back into the freezer because we want the temperature before we emulsify it to be very cold, under 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, what we have remaining is our spices and our binder. We also have a little liquid that we're gonna be adding to the mix while we're emulsifying it, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. So let's go ahead and put that meat into the freezer. Rechill it under 32 Fahrenheit is ideal, and let's get it into our food processor. We want a food processor with razor sharp blades, and all we're gonna be adding in this first step is our meat that has the onions and garlic and our spices, and we're gonna to begin to chop. During this initial step, we want to make sure that the temperature of our meat does not exceed 45 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to be adding some ice cold water. That's going to help the temperature of our meat to stay very low, which is critically important when making an emulsified sausage. Let's go ahead and scrape the sides down. As you can see right here, it's starting to break up nicely. But what we're looking for is more of a fine, sort of like a paste. And the temperature should be below 45. And we are very good we're still below freezing actually 26.0 25.4 so we're going to continue chopping we've got plenty of room to work with we're looking for a nice smooth paste and every time i chop i'm usually chopping for about 30 seconds and then i'll give it a check check the temperature notice right here it's starting to come together but it still looks a little grainy and so I'm going to continue to scrape it from the walls just so that I can ensure that everything gets chopped at the same rate, put the top back on it and keep on going. As we get close, you will start to see that batter start to whip around the base of that food processor. We're going to go ahead and add a little more ice water, which is going to keep that temperature down. Remember, under 45 degrees, that's the goal during this first stage. And I am very pleased with that. That's exactly what we're supposed to be looking at. Nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and add our fat and our binder. 
and it's now time to continue chopping. During this second stage of emulsification, we don't want the temperature to exceed 55 degrees. All right, so keep the temp under 55. Everything will be good to go. We're going to add the rest of our ice cold water. And what we're looking for is just a homogeneous meat batter. We shouldn't be able to discern the difference between meat and fat. Let's give it a quick temp check. A lot of room to work with. I think I'm going to give this one final chop. So remember, 55 is the magic number, and we're at 45. And so I think we can afford maybe another 15 seconds, 20 seconds of chopping. It's just going to make a nice, fine paste. Here we go. What does it look like once we're finished? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Woo, I'm cutting it close, too. Look at that. It rose 10 degrees in like 15 seconds. So you definitely want to check the temperature from time to time. Now let's put this into a mold. I only made one kilo and it looks like this particular mold could probably hold two kilos. So rather than have, you know, a flat, short, uh, Libre case, we're, we're going to go ahead and just push it to one side. I am going to score the top so that we can have a cool pattern once it's finished. And at this point, I am going to just place this into the refrigerator uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's late, but also I want the flavors to come together before we cook it. So into the fridge it goes. We're going to cover that. It's now the next morning and it's time to cook. So here's our cooking schedule when it comes to this particular sausage. It's going to be hot and fast for the first 20 minutes. And then we're going to hit it with a low and slow until we reach our target temperature. So 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius for 20 minutes, then lower the temperature to 250 Fahrenheit or 121 Celsius and cook till we get to an internal of 155. And this is what that's going to look like. You do want to let it rest after it comes out of the oven so that everything can just kind of come together. But look, there's no fat spilled out. Everything is absolutely beautiful. The emulsion was perfect. And this is what our Libre Quesad loaf looks like. We've got a great crust on the, literally on all sides. It's going to bring that wonderful flavor. Let's go ahead and give this a slice and see how it tastes. Our Libra Quesa is ready, and I am very pleased with the way it came out. Nice color, beautiful browning on all sides. We did have some mechanical openings, but that's not that big a deal because that doesn't affect the flavor. And it looks like we've got just a great texture. Ah, smells incredible. I can tell you right now, I didn't make nearly enough. I mean, this right here is as good as gone. Oh, that smells incredible. A lot of different ways to enjoy this sausage. You could eat it by itself. You could put some mustard on it. You could warm it up and, you know, serve it with a fried egg. Or you could put a little Lieberwurst spread with some cheese on it and turn it into an actual liver cheese sausage. So let's give it a taste and see how we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is remarkably juicy and incredibly flavorful. I could see how this would pair perfectly with mustard or even the richness from an egg yolk. I'm going to go in for round number two. Mm. <laughs> mm. That crust adds a whole nother layer of flavor that is superb. <sighs> wow. I hope you guys get a chance to make this sausage. If you have any questions about it, because I know it can be tricky, especially if you're new to the world of emulsified sausage. So ask your questions below. Also, if you got something out of this video, help me out by giving me a great big thumbs up. If you like sausages and you're new to this channel, take a moment and click that subscribe button and that notification bell because we're uploading a brand new sausage making recipe every day this month and I don't want you to miss a single episode. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.